Hi, it's Rob B here with Rob D and welcome to this Property Hub University course. In this course, we're going to teach you such an important subject. It's how to spot the next property hotspot. And if you get this and if you understand this, your property investment journey can become so much more profitable. Definitely. Let's be clear, you can do well in property investing anywhere. Depending on your strategy, you can just chug along perfectly nicely in a very normal, average area that doesn't start to perform dramatically better. But if you can invest in a hotspot, everything gets better. You have more rental demand, you have more capital growth, which grows the value of your portfolio and potentially allows you to tap into some of that equity to grow your portfolio further as well. Now, we do our bit to help you find hotspots because at the start of every year, we list some of our favourites. We normally pick out three to five places that we have our eye on for the coming year. But of course, we don't know everywhere in the UK. And even if we did, we couldn't run through every single one of them. So while it's interesting to see where we've got our eye on, it's far more important to have the skill of being able to find hotspots for yourself and look at an area and evaluate whether it has hotspot potential. So that is exactly what you're going to learn in this course. So the first thing we need to do is understand what is a hotspot. Well, a hotspot is an area with improving prospects or an area that's undervalued and is going to get more attention. And by having these improving prospects and or getting more attention, then you will then start to see more people investing in that area, more people buying in that area, and then property prices starting to rise at a faster rate than it's done before. So this area may not be moving at all now in terms of capital growth. It may be moving up slightly, but if you time it right and you pick out a hotspot, you would expect the growth to kick on not long after you've invested. Yeah, so the key to finding a hotspot is picking the right area at the right time. And it's timing that's critical. You get some areas that are really strong areas in which to own property, but they're already well established and they're not gonna grow dramatically faster. At the other end of the scale, you've got areas that are getting worse. You've got areas where population might be falling, where a big employer might have shut down and people are moving out. And clearly, you don't want to be investing there. But there are a lot of areas in the middle that currently are not getting better or worse. They're just staying the same. Some of them are going to stay the same for a long time. But some of them are just at that point now where they're starting to pick up momentum. So if you get in at the right time, you can ride that momentum upwards. Timing is the hardest part of identifying a hotspot. So that's something that we're going to be talking about a lot in the coming modules. So let's now focus on how you can find your own hotspots. What do you need to look for? Well, the first thing to look for is an area with improving prospects. And it's important to understand what improving prospects are. A new shop opening isn't probably enough. A high street having a mini makeover isn't going to be enough. But big projects, big investment can make a difference to an area. So an example of this would be transport links. You've seen this in London with Crossrail. Those areas that Crossrail now connects have seen a huge uplift in prices. And the same will happen with HS2 if it's ever delivered. Infrastructure projects can come in all different varieties. It doesn't necessarily have to be transport, although that is a good one. It can be an area seeing a lot of investment. So an area that was previously run down, but a private company or the government putting lots of money into it may transform an area. A great example of this would be Salford Tees in Manchester. That area has seen billions of pounds invested into it, and subsequently, it's attracted lots of important employers. And new employers in themselves are another sign of a potential hotspot. This can be tied to those infrastructure improvements, but it doesn't have to be. For example, the BBC moved to Manchester as a result of everything that was going on in Salford. Those two things were very much tied together. And as a result of a big employer like the BBC moving to Manchester, that created lots of other jobs as well in industries that serve that particular employer. So employers can be drawn in by infrastructure, but they don't have to be related. For example, Amazon often opens up new distribution centres in areas that happen to have good transport links. They're not new transport links, but they're already strong. The company is experiencing more demand. Therefore, it needs to open a new facility. When it does, that creates a lot of jobs locally, which of course pushes up demand and pushes up prices. So one significant employer is usually the catalyst. But as a result of that, you then get lots more widespread job creation that really can transform an area and turn it into a hotspot. 
Major events can also transform an area. You only have to look at East London and the impact that the Olympics had there. The Commonwealth Games going to places like Manchester and Glasgow, again, have completely transformed what the area was like before to what it is now. Major events don't come around very often, but if they do, you should give them attention because other people will if you don't. And finally, you can look for something that's hard to define, which is a general sense of optimism or a changing narrative about an area. So Manchester is another good example of this. Lots of exciting things started happening in Manchester and all of those things that were happening individually had their own impact that were directly tied to the benefits that were brought. But as a result of all these things happen, the story around Manchester changed. People started to get the feeling that Manchester was where it's at. People in the London media suddenly started talking about Manchester as somewhere to invest. Graduates who otherwise would have left Manchester decided that they were going to stay put. And that brought all manner of benefits. So you can get direct benefits from all the things that we've talked about. But when they reach a certain point and people start telling the story and it changes the way people feel about an area, that in itself can spawn more investment and form a virtuous cycle and make that area kick on even further. So those are some ways you can spot an area on the up. In the next video, we'll tell you how to find areas that are currently undervalued. So in the last module, we took you through how to find an area where its prospects are improving. In this module, we're going to explain why an area, even if it doesn't get any improvements, might be currently undervalued and how to spot an area that is undervalued. There are three factors you can look for. And the first one we're going to talk about is the ripple effect. The ripple effect is your friend if you are trying to find a property hot spot. Because what you will do is you will look for an area that is already hot, an area that is doing really well and capital growth is pushing on. And then what you will do is look for an area close by with good transport links to that location that has yet to move up in value. So if we take London, for example, London did fantastically well. And then lots of areas surrounding London prospered as well. Stevenage is a great example of this. Great train links into London. Stevenage itself hasn't had major investments into the town, yet the property prices really accelerated after London had pushed on. However, it didn't happen straight away, so you must be patient, but you can take confidence that nearly always, after a real strong growth in a city or town, areas around it tend to benefit as well. So the ripple effect is one factor that you can use to spot an area that might be undervalued or might be about to undergo a big increase in value based on what's happening nearby. The second big factor that you can look for is our old friend, the property cycle. You can look for an area whose time in terms of the cycle is yet to come. So if you're not familiar with the idea of the 18 year property cycle, stop this course right now. Go and watch our course on the 18 year property cycle explained. It's a really important concept and that course will tell you everything you need to know about it. But assuming you do have a basic knowledge of the cycle, you'll know that the peak of the cycle tends to happen at the same time for the whole country. And the crash certainly happens at exactly the same time. But different regions and different cities move towards that peak at different speeds. So typically, London and the southeast recover first from a crash and they have their growth earliest. Then it might spread to the Midlands. Then it might spread to the northwest. So at any given point in the cycle, you can find an area that hasn't yet had its growth spurt. Right at the beginning of the cycle, that can be pretty much anywhere. But as the cycle matures and it gets closer to the peak, more and more areas will start looking fully valued and you'll be guided towards the areas that haven't yet had the growth that the rest of the country has enjoyed. However, it's important to realise that the fundamentals have still got to be there. Everything that we've talked about so far must still be in place because if those fundamentals of employment and transport and things like that are not in place, then there's very little reason why that area would experience growth. So to pick the northeast as an example, Newcastle will always have a point in the cycle where its growth really booms because it's very strong in terms of employment and it's got decent transport connections. But there are other areas of the northeast that I'm not going to mention anywhere for risk of offending anyone where the employment prospects are poor and they're poorly connected to the rest of the country. Therefore, even if property seems cheap there, it's probably going to remain cheap and the boom won't do too much for it. So you can't just use the cycle and throw everything else out the window. But if you can make use of your knowledge of the property cycle, that's a great way of spotting areas that are currently undervalued. 
Another way of spotting it if an area is undervalued is looking for good affordability levels for owner-occupiers and for renters. Now, there's lots of data out there. If you search for affordability levels in a particular city, you're going to get the information you're looking for, and you want to compare them. And if you find an area that is affordable for the people who live there and has great fundamentals, then the prospects for capital growth are pretty strong. Now, if we take London as an example, London has great fundamentals, but affordability is stretched. So even if you create a million new jobs, put a brand new transport system in place, make those fundamentals even better, yes, that may benefit capital growth prospects, but if affordability is still stretched, then it will have its limits on how far it can go. Whereas Liverpool, for example, has fantastic fundamentals, but as we record this in 2020, affordability levels are really good for owner-occupiers and for renters. So because affordability is attractive and fundamentals are attractive, you'd expect a place like Liverpool to do very well in the coming years. Now, this example isn't exclusive to Liverpool. There are other areas out there, but by doing your research, you'll be able to find them. So by this point in the course, you've now got three ways of finding an area that's got room to grow, either because of the ripple effect, because of its time in the cycle, or because of its affordability levels. You also know what to look for to find an area that's on the up in terms of the different types of investment that are going in. So you've got a really great basis to go and find the next property hotspot. However, there are some things you need to be careful of and watch out for if you're going to steer clear of making some expensive mistakes. And we're going to look at those in the next module. In this module, we're going to give you three things to look out for when you think you've identified a property hotspot. So hopefully now you're confident using some of the ideas we've talked about to find a potential hotspot. But there are some common mistakes that you need to look out for to avoid leading you astray. And we're going to go into those in this module. The first thing you need to be aware of is timing. So you can see a case for an area happening, but it could take a lot longer than you think. So just because investment's going in, fundamentals are there, affordability is looking great, it doesn't mean that capital growth is instantly going to come your way. It might, but it might take years. And that's okay if you're in it for the long term. But if you're trying to make quick money and trying to buy something and sell it on really quickly, don't bank on the capital growth coming in the timeframes you need. Over the long term, you'll be rewarded, maybe even the medium term. But if you're doing it for the short term, it's a risk. Another thing you need to be careful with timing is that you're not trying to be too clever. If you are spotting an area that has decent fundamentals and some investment going in and affordability is pretty good, but there are other stronger candidates for capital growth, then you should look at those first. This is a mistake I've made personally. Many years ago, I invested in Hull. Affordability is good. There's plenty of investment coming into the area and the fundamentals are reasonably strong. But I could have done more investments in places like Manchester, which also had all those things, but stronger in each category. So I was trying to be too clever. And financially, that cost me. So stick to these guidelines in a simplistic way, because the chances are you'll do better. The second thing you need to be aware of is that if you're looking for an area that's improving, the changes that are happening must be significant and they must be sustainable. So there's a lot of news out there once you start looking for it about what's going on in particular areas. Yeah, and you could easily read about £10 million that's being spent improving a particular town centre. And you might get excited about that and think, ah, oh, brilliant, this is a sign that this area is on the up, investment is going to flow in and everything's going to be great. But in reality, even though £10 million is a lot of money, in terms of regeneration, it's absolutely nothing. There's lots of money being spent all over the place all the time. But that doesn't mean it's going to necessarily translate into a big enough improvement in an area to see its prospects really improve. Same for something like a new bus route. That new bus route might really help some people out, but it's probably not going to make a big enough difference to really move the needle compared to an area becoming connected to a big tram system, which probably is going to make enough of a difference to show up in property prices. So changes must be significant. They must also be sustainable. And this is particularly a risk in smaller investment areas. So say you've got a small, fairly isolated town and there's a big announcement that a major international employer is coming to the area and creating lots of new jobs. That is brilliant. And it probably does mean that more people are going to come into the area. They're going to be earning more and that's going to potentially push property prices up. But if that one company dominates employment in that town, it could just as easily go away again. So even though that change is very positive, there's a chance that it could be reversed. 
So when you're looking for a hotspot, you don't want to be doing it based on one item of news, one change. You really want to be looking for a combination of different indicators, lots of different things happening that are cumulatively going to kickstart a virtuous cycle and see an area really kicking on. The final caveat you need to be aware of is hotspots actually aren't the be all and end all. Yes, absolutely. If you can get a great investment in a great hotspot area, then your investment will fly. But it's quite easily done to make a poor investment in a hotspot area. Just because you're investing in a hotspot area doesn't guarantee you success. You still need to do all the research, build all the contacts, and make sure that you've got your numbers right before investing. You can make a brilliant investment in an average area by following those rules. But of course, if you apply those rules in an area that's about to become a hotspot, then yes, your investment will be supercharged. But remember, a hotspot is just one piece of the jigsaw. You need to slot in all the other pieces as well to make it a great investment. So now you've got all the knowledge you need to go away and do your research. Now, just solidify your knowledge by taking the final quiz. Then, good luck finding your next property hotspot.